my name is Jill Hosey. I am a social worker in private practice in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. I work with kids, youth and adults, people across the lifespan who have experiences of complex trauma and dissociation. In terms of the guidelines, I am one of the co-authors of the EMDR and SSP combined delivery guidelines where we work together as one unified team to create these recommendations for integrating the SSP into EMDR therapy. So the key highlights for the combined delivery guidelines for SSP and EMDR. So as you start to make your way through the guidelines, what you're going to notice is we're going to talk a little bit about why we came up with this idea to create the guidelines. What's the purpose and the rationale and who the guidelines are intended for. We're going to provide some key terms and some resources to support you on your way. And then we shift into intake and assessment. So looking at the importance of gathering history, coming to understand our clients and using assessment, both within the context of the SSP and within the context of EMDR therapy. From there, we look at how do we take that information we learn through intake and assessment and shift it into integration. So using that information to help us make clinical decisions around integrating the SSP and understanding why we're making these clinical decisions. We provide some additional clinical considerations for therapists to keep in the back of their mind, as well as how the SSP may be integrated within the eight phases of EMDR. And finally, readers will be offered an appendices that offers different treatment guidelines, important SSP information, as well as information on EMDR therapy and where you can go to get more knowledge, more resources, more tools, if it feels like there's anything missing from the actual document. So why do I think it's important for EMDR therapists to learn about combined delivery? Well, I think when we think about EMDR therapy and the SSP, we're thinking about two incredibly powerful, um, a powerful tool and an incredibly powerful therapeutic modality. And when we bring these two together, um, being able to articulate why we're making the clinical decisions we are, as opposed to just simply integrating it. In having access to these guidelines, clinicians can be supported in their decision-making process, in the case conceptualization and treatment planning process, so it's more intentional as the SSP is integrated. And as we're more intentional, we have greater access to track gains, to track challenges, to look at what's working and what's not, and to be really reflective around why am I making this decision is this aligned with my client, my client's goals and my goals for treatment? And then how am I understanding how that change can be utilized and augment therapy or EMDR therapy specifically? So what would I say to EMDR therapists who aren't yet SSP providers and words of wisdom around why it's helpful to learn more, or why I recommend learning more about combined delivery? Well, I believe that the polyvagal theory is an incredibly important way of understanding what may be happening for our clients inside, as well as what plays out in the room within the context of therapy. I think that looking at polyvagal theory and the ways in which it complements the adaptive information processing model, which guides EMDR, we're offered a greater ability to show up for our clients and provide tools and interventions as part of their, their healing journey. And so for anyone who knows about polyvagal theory, I think it's incredibly important to start to become curious about the SSP and curious about how can this support my client's healing goals? How can this support the ability for my client to be with me within social engagement within the context of EMDR therapy. We're still working within this incredible relational field of therapy. And in working with trauma, working with EMDR therapy, how can we 
improve outcomes? How can we support our clients to access a greater sense of inner ease, which we can then use as adaptive information as we move forward into EMDR therapy? So the greatest, you know, my words of wisdom would be um, looking at the ways in which the safe and sound protocol supports what we know and understand about polyvagal theory and how that dovetails with AIP and can support client outcomes and treatment success.